50. They need a mark. Finlayson's there. D'Ambrosio roped it. Serious pressure on. Amon's tackled. Sagan so oh, Jones. He brings the house down. And he brings Port Adelaide back from the clouds to claim the most extraordinary win. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about match winners and specific to Port Adelaide. Uh, match winning goals for the club, obviously with the recent events with Darcy Byrne Jones kicking the winning goal against Hawthorne and an almighty comeback. Uh, you could do so many things about this. Where does it rank in terms of match winning goals of all time? Where does it rank as in Port Adelaide match winning goals? Where does that comeback rank in terms of Port Adelaide comebacks? And like in just the scheme of things, obviously 41 points down and then in the final few seconds we kick um, a match winning goal thanks to Darcy Byrne Jones, but nothing Obviously, to take away from uh, Willy Rioli's massive set shot from 50 in the dying seconds as well. Two goals inside 30 seconds. It's one of the more bizarre, incredible finishes that we've had as a football club. So where does it rank in terms of um, our best match winning goal? There's a lot to talk about. There's been a lot that's happened over the years, um, especially in recent times. You know, I'm going to make this a more of a discussion topic than rather than just listing because I think each of their own... Um, performances and goals have a certain occasion to it. Um, I, was, I kick things off with you know Stevie Motlop's match-winning perform uh, goal against the Crows in in showdown um, forty-four in two thousand and eighteen. You know I speak of you know Robbie Gray's match winner after the siren against Carlton um, back in twenty twenty at the Gabba. That's a, one of the more bizarre situations because it's at the Gabba against the Victorian side in the middle of a pandemic and he kicks the winning goal after the siren from the pocket. It's one of the more better executed finishes. Um, and I think I think those two sort of separate from the rest. You know, I throw in there Burgoyne's match winner against um, Carlton back in uh, 2000. Um, you know, I throw in you know, a match winning goal like Jay Schultz against Melbourne 2018. There's a, there's a, a match winner as well against Richmond, uh, Robbie Gray's. Um, kick with I think three minutes to go. Yeah, it's these clutch moments that uh, all add up, and um, that's where I want to see where it ranks because this goal that Darcy's kicked is one of the more incredible finishes you'll ever see in a football match. Like it is bizarre to sit here and still to this day, it is currently Tuesday. It is two days after the the event. I'm still watching the replay of that last minute. I'm still watching people in the crowd filming. I'm still watching my own freaking video that I recorded. Uh, in the dying moments, you know, that's how much I, I'm still trying to get over this situation. And you know, we, we celebrate these moments as fans and, and we can talk about the game and I've reviewed the game. Uh, I've put my fan view up as well. Um, all of those things are out. There is actually a, a 20 to one list that I've made on the channel um, that was made a couple of years back as well. So to go through that, I'll link these uh, in the description. Um, but yeah, this is, it's right up there. I think it's in the top three conversation. And it sits there well with Robbie's winner against Carlton. And it sits there well with Motlop's winner in the showdown. Everything else sort of comes and goes. And I, I'm not sure where to put it. Because in terms of match winners, do you define it as a, a close game finish? Like I talk of games like against Melbourne last year. Um, and I'm not going to forget Dan Houston's match winner either after the siren against Essendon. And that's right up there too. So there's a lot, obviously. Um, and as you can tell, I just realised that Dan Houston's was one I was completely forgetting. And I don't know how, but it's it's it. Well, that, in that case, it's a top five. Where though, I'm not sure because it's such a peculiar time in the game. It is not even after the siren. It's not three minutes to go. It is. With two seconds left on the clock, he kicks the goal. With seven seconds left, the clock runs down. There's two seconds to go. Ball up, siren. We've come from 41 points down. Does the goal top off the comeback? Or is the comeback the story because of the goal? Like, it's just it's so bizarre to me that it it happened in front of my eyes. Um, and it's a discussion point that I think a lot of people will be having. Um, you know, does it does it... Does the, the occasion of Indigenous round wearing the Guernsey come into play? Is that is that the case? I think the funny thing is, you know, last year in round 10, we played Melbourne. It was that unbelievable game in the wet and we won it. Um, I think we kicked the, you know, Rosie kicked the winning goal with three minutes to go, four minutes to go. You know, we, we talk about this time um, last year in round 10. Now, same occasion this year in round 10. 
We go up against Hawthorne. They go 41 points up. We come back and win the game. So many moments add up to this. And I think with DBJ's goal, comparing it to the rest and what makes it so different is the the opportunity that he took. There is a half a chance. You're soccering off the ground. You have no control of the ball. You have no control of the situation. You're just hacking at it. He's hacked at it off the ground, hit it perfectly. It's gone straight through the middle after a brilliant tackle from Jed McEntee to get the balls to spill out into a contest, and he's taken a half chance, a half chance to win your game, win your team a game of football. I think that's what sets itself apart from the rest. Every other time, a player's had control. Houston's set shot. He has full control of what he's doing. It's just a matter of executing. Same with Robbie Gray's. Execution after the siren, set shot. Stevie Motlop, you know, there is some um, abnormalities in the situation. Free play, he's running around, he's got opportunity to be tackled, but he takes his moment, he's got full control of the ball, kicks the goal. There is no control with DBJ, his winner. That's what sets this apart from the rest. And I think the fact that it's combined with a comeback, it makes the sense of occasion so much better. I'm not going to put it as number one. I'm not going to put it as um, as a number because all of these occasions are different. I want you guys to talk about it. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below because this is a situation that is so unique in terms of a match winner. It's so bizarre how a team can lose from two goals down. Um, how a team, sorry, can win from two goals down with 33 seconds to go is just baffling in itself. So I would love to know what you think, Port fans, and everyone else that's uh, watching. If you're not a fan of Port Adelaide, uh, but you're watching, let me know what you think about the the, uh, the winner and where it ranks. And you can throw in the conversation of where it ranks against other match winners. You know, Jamie Elliott's had a few over the years. You know, we talked about Dacos earlier in the year against Carlton. Uh, there is so many match winners and where it ranks. It would be very, 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 very difficult to put in the situation. Um to put a number to it. And I think the uniqueness of a match winning goal is they come every so often. Match winning goals, free and play come few and far between. Set shots after the siren come few and far between. And I think a winner inside the last minute to have this occasion, it ranks high, no doubt about it. But if you, in terms of Port Adelaide's perspective, it's right up there in the top five. Uh, in terms of the AFL, it could be a top 10 match winner. Just depends on you know the situation and and everything like that and people's opinion. It's such a subject to scenarios, subject to whatever happened, whatever the case may be. But yeah, this goal to round it up and and to summarise it all, it's a moment where it it defines any situation of comeback. It defines any situation of giving up. It. <laughs> A match-winning goal like this with a comeback like that, 41 points down, if you applied that to you know a life scenario, and I don't normally do this with the channel, I always talk football, but it just puts in a perspective, like you can always be down, you can always be just about out, but you're just going to throw shit at the wall and hope it sticks. And if it does, you're going to pay off. It's going to pay off and you're going to win. And that's what we did. And that's what Port Adelaide did. That's what this goal represents. It's let's just go for it. And if you can apply that to yourself, apply that to football, you know, you're going to be okay. And I think that's what a match-winning goal like this um, definitely inspires uh, to never give up. So that's what every match-winning goal does is never give up. You're always in it. So well done, DBJ. Well done, Port Adelaide. Well done to every match-winning goal ever because it is, it's a beautiful thing to witness. And to witness it live, holy shit, it's something I'll never forget. Serious pressure on Amon's tackled. So good ball. He brings the house down. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content to come your way. Uh, plenty happening this week. Uh, plenty more to come. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and yeah, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts in, about this topic in the comments below. My name is Anthony. Thank you so much for, for watching once again. As always, though, count the pair.